Hello. Today we're going to go over the G Series 4.0 PPS, which is the latest version of PPS released for the G2 through G5 pagers. First thing we'll do here uh, is is log in to the software, and the username and password, as before, uh, is admin and admin. Once we get in there, as you can see, it's somewhat familiar, but uh, it has changed uh, uh, in, in a few different ways. All of the older files are still compatible with this version of, of, of 4.0 software. However, uh, there are a, a few things that you can do if you were to create your file uh, again from scratch, and we'll go over that uh, as the video progresses. First thing, and one of the major changes that was made, uh, is we've added this Customer Public Resource Manager. So this Public Resource Manager is essentially a pool of uh, information uh, or a database of different systems, different tones, different voice prompts that you can use and, and pull from throughout multiple, uh, making multiple files. First thing we'll come to is our P25 Trunking System Manager. As you can see here, I, I've already created one here, uh, but what, what you would have here is a, uh, um, a, a base, basic one. But what this will do uh, is it will, is you can create your P25 Trunking System in this section here. And as, as before, you can import from Radio Reference as well. You can import using um, the login to radio reference uh, you have to have a premium account uh, as before but uh, if you have a premium account with radio reference you can log in and download um, the systems so one thing this gives us is the ability to use this same system over many files that way you're not having to if you're build say you're building files for uh, multiple uh, agencies and you want all of the files to be different files but you want the same systems you could have done it before by copying that file multiple times and just changing uh, out uh, information but this gives you a a database to pull from and what this can do also is sort your talk group IDs into your systems and and that will connect these talk group IDs to uh, these systems later on in the in the programming stages. As you can see here, I have the Ohio Marks IP system that was pulled directly from Radio Reference. It pulls that information. Um, I pulled uh, a few different sites here that are local uh, to my area. And when I click on this, it, it will uh, open up a smaller window here, and it'll allow me to change the system alias, the WACN ID, the system ID. Uh, enable or disable site trunking um, and then I can click on these little buttons here uh, and just like before when you were in your uh, P25 frequency system settings you can add your sites here if I click again it adds uh, it allows you to see all of the sites change site IDs RFSS IDs uh, things like that uh, and, and, and label them and also you can select multiples using that uh, uh, okay I'll close this and the next button is the control channels so these are the control channels for the, the system uh, that I have imported here so I can close that out the last button here is uh, the full spectrum scan just like as before you can set a full spectrum scan by enabling it it'll allow you to, to change your time your ranges your frequency scan ranges uh, start and end of your frequency range and the step size and this is if you're not sure of the frequencies but you know kind of where they begin and where they end on the spectrum go ahead and disable that for here since we have our uh, control channels already added and that uh, is the p25 trunking system manager now this as I said before this will uh, be a resource that we'll be able to draw from later, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Customer Alert Tone Manager uh, allows you to add different alert tones. 
Uh, this is where you'll add all of your custom alert tones and then any of these custom alert tones can be used over uh, a multitude of different uh, files. The customer channel voice prompt manager is the same essentially the same thing but for voice prompts. So you can add different voice prompts in here. The create new profile option uh, menu has changed uh, quite a bit. Um, it will actually allow you to filter out all of these many uh, different model numbers. And one of the things you can do here is you can change uh, depending on what band you have. Say I have a, a G5 and the first band uh, is going to be uh, the 7800 band on the G5 and then the second band would be say VHF. Uh, and I want this to support analog, DMR, uh, P25 conventional, and P25 trunking. And then all I have to do is here is click this search by condition, and it will give me all of the model numbers that support that, all the options that I uh, chose. Now, one of the great options that we've added here, if you've got your device for the first time, and you plug in and you want to find out exactly what your device is, you plug it in and just hit this search by connected. As you can see, I have no device connected, so it just it prompts me that I have no device connected. When you do this, it will actually pull up the model number that's stored inside the unit, and it will be able to, to when you create your new file, it will create, uh, create that there. I'm going to create a new file here, and what I'm going to do is create this G5 uh, VHF file. And this will be just like if you created this file for the very first time. Uh, with the new software just to show you what it what it does. Another great feature that we added uh, in this software is the file itself gets opened up in a an, an extra window. That means you can have multiple files open at the same time. So say I go to view and edit and I want to look at a file that for a uh, G5 here say this file if I want to look at it I can look at it and I can also look at the other file as well at the same time. Now that I have these two different files open, you can see the one that I opened second was a file that was from the original PPS, from the, uh, the versions before this one. Now we've moved some things around here. There are quite a few different uh, tabs now. We can go through a few of the changes here. One of the changes is the basic information. All of your uh, PPS, like you're requiring for passwords, uh, all of that is in, in tab, uh, or is in tab D1, the, the original tab here. Um, it, the reason this is D1 is because this is a brand new file. If you are view and editing an existing profile, it will be E1. It just depends where you open it, how you open it, whether it will be D or, or E. So it'll be in tab one here. Uh, tab two is going to be your trunking system settings. Now this is where our customer public resource manager comes into play. So what I can do is if, if I add, it'll pull out this little drop down menu, menu. And what I can do is I can select to add a 7800 system, a VHF system. I can import a CSV from uh, uh, radio reference. Uh, or I can add a system from resources and that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a system from resources. As you can see here it pulls up our trunking system list which is from our customer public resource manager. I can select this and then I can click OK and it will add that system and all of its talk group IDs that, that it has. As you can see here, here's the talk group IDs that are in there. Uh, and, and all of those, it will add all of those uh, into uh, the profile. And there are these little blue buttons up here. You can, you can check what frequencies are in there. These are just quick references that allow you to, to take a look at what's, what's actually uh, in, in there. Because I have not saved this and, and, and moved it over, it, it, it was not uh, there. But uh, as, as you see now that I've saved it, it's there. Um, and then you can just reference back to your different uh, groupings and things like that. We can close that by clicking this little red X. Um, and the conventional frequency settings is just as it was in the original. Let's see, as you can see, we uh, split the P25 from the conventional uh, into two different tabs now.
Our protocol parameter setting is the same. Secure setting is the same. The conventional group ID settings, what this will do, if, if I put a protocol here, say if I add a two-tone protocol, and it's going to allow us to change any of those, those options there. If I go to conventional group ID setting, it's going to give me two-tone here, and I can put in a, a two-tone pair. One of the things that uh, you can do is see there's this little green uh, uh, circular button here. What this will do is play the alert tone that's associated with the one you have selected. So if you want to listen to it, it'll play it over the uh, computer speakers. Up here at the top, you have conventional group ID list. There's a, a, an option here that says TGID grouping list. Uh, now, this, this is very important because one of the things this lets you do is group two tones uh, into different uh, agencies. So what we'll need to do is create a two tone grouping list. And you'll need to do this whether it's just one or two, either talk groups or, or uh, two tone. But what this does is it allows it, you to uh, create those TGID lists or those uh, two tone lists um, and select between them. So what we can do here is we, so we can select this here and then it will add that to the group. You can have a pager ID here, uh, and then here is your member list as before. So this is kind of like your group ID settings tab uh, from the original PPS. So on our zone and channel settings, one of the things that changed is uh, now when you double click, it opens up a, a small window here, and it won't show anything until you select receiving mode. So say I'm going to select monitor mode, and I want to set up my two-tone uh, system. So I'm going to click OK and then it will open up this uh, information here. And you can use these tabs here to, to jump to different sections. Zone and knob and function setting, things like that. If you click any of these cog buttons it allows you to change that uh, current setting to something else. So it allows you to change that into, into a different receiving mode. Uh, or if you want to change your voice prompt, here's our custom voice prompt list from our customer public resource manager over here. We're not going to change any of that. I want to change my protocol type to two-tone uh, so that I can so I can add this two-tone pair down here. Now, much of this is pretty much the same, but we get down here to the TGID grouping list. This will you will have to choose a TGID grouping list. The two-tone pairs that are available to you uh, will be the ones that are in that list. So, say if I were to go back here to our conventional group ID settings, and then I would add uh, another group, and say I want to enable two-tone, and I want to make this one something else. Uh, if I save that and then I go back to my zone and channel settings and then go down to the bottom here, as you can see it's not here. And the reason it's not here is because we have to add it to our TGID group. So what we do is we come back here to TGID group. You see it's not checked there. If we check that and then click OK, then we can go back to zone and channel settings, go to our knob position, go to the bottom, and now it's there and it's automatically enabled. That is, is, is how that works. Now, if, if you don't want a tone enabled, do not put it in the, the talk group list because if you don't want those, you can build different tone lists for different uh, situations. So say if you want another, another grouping list for two tone that, that just has this one in it, you would do that. Or if you want one that just has the the group one information, you would add it there. That way you could have one that, one list that does this, one list that does that, and then one list that does both. Okay, moving on. Uh, many of the changes uh, we've, we've pretty much discussed, but there were a few things that got split up from, from other, other settings here. It just gives the tabs, it condenses the tabs a little bit to settings that are more relevant to each other. So uh, in your alert tone settings, 
you're going to have things like alert durations and and priority alert settings and like um, the incoming call notification which um, is a setting that you'll need to enable or disable for say if you're using a Bluetooth headset and uh, it the uh, you every time someone talks the phone it sounds like a phone ringing or a beeping before every transmission you can enable or disable that there um, but these are mainly um, uh, alert centric uh, settings in here as you can see here it says talk group hold and remove setting that's in its own category duty status is in its own category receive backlight settings are all in their own category key and LED settings are in their own uh, the display format got its own and then home screen setting allows you to adjust the home screen as before um, detail report uh, is the same as before and then you can see here program so what you can do here is plug the unit in hit program and, and, and you're good to go uh, now one of the things I want to show you about using an older file is if I open this up when I go to P25 trunking systems it shows all of this stuff but all of the, all of the TGIDs that are in the, the talk group list from this older file all of them are going to be associated to every system in the pager so what you want to do is go in here and remove the ones that are not associated with that with that setting or with that system and that's generally the uh, the main difference uh, between the two uh, but but I would recommend um, going back and either recreating your files or if you don't want to recreate your files which is perfectly understandable at least build out the systems that you use on the regular uh, into the customer public resource manager because down the line it will help out quite a bit uh, when it comes to building new files thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video on the new features of the G-Series PPS have a wonderful day